Okay, this is a video on summations, and as with the binomial coefficients videos, if you're already familiar with sigma notation and infinite series, then I suggest you go ahead and skip to the end of the video where we look at how to do this with Wolfram Alpha. Uh, but in case you're not already familiar with summations, I'm going to remind you of what the notation looks like and then um, go through a few examples. So if I have a big sigma, in mathematics that means sum. And if I were to write sigma with k equals 0 below it and 5 above it and put a k out to the right, that means a sum from k equals 0 to 5 of k. And what I do is I count up, starting at 0 and ending at 5. Uh, so 0 is my starting value, start value. And then 5 will be the ending value. End value. So if k is 0, then my term looks like this, which is just, well, 0. And then I go up to the next one. k is 1, my term is 1. k equals 2, then I have 2. k equals 3, I have 3. k equals 4, I have 4. And k equals 5, I do use the value that I end at, but I stop after that. So this means 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, which turns out to be, uh, let's see, 6, 10, 15. Okay, so let's go through another example. That's a little bit more, um, requires a little bit more arithmetic. Sum from i equals 2. To 6, we'll usually use k, but you can use other values. m will show up in this course. We'll use i here. Oh, excuse me. I shouldn't have written that equal sign yet. And I'm going to sum i squared minus 1. Okay, so I start at 2. 2 squared minus 1 is 3. And then my next term is 3 squared minus 1, that's 8. 4 squared minus 1 is 15. 5 squared minus 1 is 24. And 6 squared minus 1 is 35. So we get 3 plus 8 plus 15 plus 24 plus 35. And if you wanted to, let's see, add that up, that'd be 11 plus 15, 26, 50, 85, it looks like. Now in this next example, I'm not actually going to compute the value, I'm just going to show you that uh, my summations have linearity, which means constants pull through, and the sums or differences can be distributed. Let's say I have the sum from k equals 1 to 4 of 2k minus k squared. And usually, whenever there's more than one term like this, or in the previous example, you'll put it in parentheses. You don't actually have to, um, but it, it avoids some ambiguity as to whether this, this sum should happen and then subtract by one, or if this sum should be occurring in each term. If you just have one term, you don't need to do the parentheses because it's clear what, what you want to sum on. Okay, so what would this look like? I'm not actually going to evaluate anything. I'm just going to plug the values in. So I have 2 times 1. 1 minus 1 squared. That's my first term. And my second term will be 2 times 2 minus 2 squared. My third term will be 2 times 3 minus 3 squared. And let's see if I can squeeze this fourth term in here. Uh, 2 times 4 minus 4 squared. Okay, well, you could rearrange things, and we could instead go ahead and add the 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 4, use the distributive property backwards to factor out a 2, and you have 2 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, right? That takes care of this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. And then I can subtract 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, plus 4 squared. And notice that needs to be a, an addition since the minus sign or the negative sign is out in front of the parentheses. So when we distribute it, we want it to remain negative. Okay. 
Well, this is 2 times the sum from k equals 1 to 4 of k minus the sum from k equals 1 to 4 of k squared. So if we compare this to our original, we see that the sum can be broken up over the two different terms, and the two can be pulled out once we have it on that only on that first term, since it's, there isn't a 2 multiplied on the second term, too. So we got the sum from k equals 1 to 4 of 2k, but the 2 can come out, and that's 2 times the sum from k equals 1 to 4 of k, minus, we can distribute this sum over to the k squared and pull the negative out. Okay. That's called linearity, which means that constant factors can be pulled through, and sums or differences can be distributed. Okay, we're going to do one more example here, and this is going to be an example of an infinite series. Those examples that we've looked at so far have been finite summations. Suppose I have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 half to the n. So that means I start at 1, and my term looks like 1 half to the power of 1. I won't write the power of 1. And then I have n equals 2, so that's 1 half squared. I know that's 1 fourth. And then there's n equals 3, that's 1 half to the power of 3, that's 1 eighth. But my end value is infinity, and infinity isn't really a value, it just tells you that we're not going to end. We're just going to keep doing this. Okay. Now this is an idea from Calculus 2, and that's why I've set the prerequisite for this course as Calculus 2. I'm not going to expect you to be able to compute these sums analytically, but I do expect you to know what this means. Okay, and then we'll use Wolfram Alpha to compute, to compute this. It turns out that this sum is 1, and this is a special case where I can draw a picture and show you that it makes sense to let this value be 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw um, an approximation of a square. I can't draw a square, so we'll just call this an approximate square. Imagine that it's a square of side length 1 on each side. Okay, so this distance is 1, this distance is 1. That means the area of the entire square is 1. So if I want a value of 1 half, then I could cut it in half and shade in half of it. So that shaded in area represents 1 half. Okay, and then I'm going to get fancy and use different colors here. For 1 fourth, that is half of half. Okay, so I could cut this in half and put one fourth right here. Okay. And then one eighth is half of one fourth. This area is one fourth, so I'm going to cut it in half, and I'll have one eighth here. Okay, and then I would choose some other color and do one sixteenth, which is half of the eighth that's left. One thirty second would come next. And we'll see if I run out of space first or I run out of colors. I think I'm going to run out of space. Uh, 164th, I could shade in here, and I, I don't want to try to keep going further. If I were somehow able to keep doing this forever, I would fill up the square. And in that sense, I would have area, the total area of these rectangles, equal to 1, because that's the area of the square. So that's, that's one example of an infinite series, where I add up um, an infinite number of terms and get a finite value. And we say that this converges to 1 but a lot of times we just say it's equal to 1. We really mean converges. Not, it's not in the same sense that a finite sum is 1. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to use Wolfram Alpha. Okay, so let's suppose I want to do that example that we just um, talked about. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 half to the power of n. Well, the order is going to get switched a little bit from the way we say it, and I'm going to sum 1 half to the power of n, and then I tell it what n values I want it to sum in between. And to, to represent infinity, I just type out infinity. So sum 1 half to the n, n equals 1 to infinity. And if I press enter, then sure enough it shows me that this, um, this sum does converge to 1. Okay, now let's do some of our other examples. Our first example was the sum from k equals 0 to 5 of k. So I can have sum k, comma k, equals 0 to 5. 
press enter. And it'll give us 15, just like what we found in the video. Okay. Now, there's different ways you can play with these words. Uh, this is the way I type it up in the text. Um, I can replace that comma with from uh, to make it more like what we say. I might even be able to switch the order around. I'm not for sure. But I'm going to be consistent in what I do in the videos and in the, um, in the text and just, just keep that comma there. Okay, the second example is the sum from i equals 2 to 6 of i squared minus 1. So I type sum, and we'll have i squared minus 1, and I have i equals 2 to 6, and that gives us an 85, which I do remember calculating. And then the third example was sum of 2k minus k squared, and I put it in parentheses because that's the way I did it on the video. You don't have to with Wolfram Alpha. It knows what you're talking about if you don't. Um, k equals 1 to 4. And that gives us negative 10. Negative 10, which we actually never computed. I, that didn't look familiar, but that's why we never computed its value. Okay, so that um, is how you use Wolfram Alpha to compute summations, and notice that finite summations work the exact same way as infinite summations.